welcome back to the channel. Today we are covering a super new feature called Publish to Power BI. So we're taking a semantic model that's built in the gold layer of Databricks and publish it directly from the Databricks workspace to Power BI service. And this is huge for someone like me that's using MacBook. So I don't have to spin up a VM, install Power BI desktop on that VM in order to just author Power BI semantic models. Without further ado, let's head over to my laptop. This feature has uh, two prerequisites. One, data needs to be sitting in Unity Catalog, as well as your cluster needs to be Unity Catalog enabled. Second bit is it needs XMLA endpoints, read and write, to be able to write to Power BI service. So you basically need premium, premium producer, or embedded capacity on your Power BI workspace. We're seeing Power BI's admin portal. If you go to capacity setting, choose your capacity. You need to make sure XMLA endpoint read and write is um, chosen instead of read only or off and do apply, then Databricks can write to Power BI service. Now within my catalog and my schema, I got a genomics data set. And in these data sets, I've got primary keys as well as foreign keys set up. And I'm expecting when I publish to Power BI service, Power BI will be able to pick up private keys and foreign keys and build relationships. So what I can do is within the schema, I can say publish to Power BI workspace. I can also choose a specific table within that schema to publish to Power BI service. So I choose my workspace and I choose um, either direct query or import. Here, if you choose import, remember after publishing to Power BI, you will need to refresh the semantic model before you can build re the reports um, because Power BI needs to actually cache the data into memory first. As is publishing, just remember if your workspace has front end private link or IP access list, the publish itself will work fine. But when you are actually building reporting Power BI, when you are connecting Power BI service to Databricks, you will need a gateway. I have another video on networking security for Power BI and Databricks linked um, top right. So you can take a look at that. After it's published to Power BI service, the first thing we need to do is to go edit data source credentials. So if we go to our workspace, find the data set or the semantic model we just published. This is basically your catalog name dash your schema name. And you can do settings, go to data source credentials and edit it with your credentials, the credential you want Power BI service to use to authenticate against Databricks. Um, once you've signed in and authenticated, what you can do is to open the data model. Now this button is grayed out. If you don't turn on allow user to edit data model in Power BI service, and what you need to do to turn it on is in the workspace, go to workspace setting. In Power BI, go under general and toggle this checkbox on, and then the users will be able to edit data models within service. If we go back to the model itself and take a look at the data model, you can see the relationships are actually built based on our foreign key and the primary key that's set up in Unity Catalog. So that's great. And what we want to do here is to set up role level security in Power BI. And we'll create a new role. We'll take this table and take something like population. We'll say population equal to GBR. And we will save this role. I will name the role and I can assign it to a certain security group or a different user here. And that's how you can set up role level security for Power BI without Power BI desktop. 
What you can also do is to utilize the access control in Unity Catalog. For that, you need the uh, storage modes to be direct query, you need the authentication to be all off, and you need to toggle on let end user use their Power BI identity to connect to data source. For now, you need to be on Azure and using AAD. The AWS AAD pass-through for this specific feature is not yet supported during public preview, but it is on the roadmap. And now we've seen the model. We can also build new measures, add new columns, and manage relationships or calculation groups. But what we want to do is actually build a new report. So what we can do is to quickly look at how many participants we have per population. So we're going to put the population in the X and also the number of participants in the Y. So we can now see how many participants we have in this study per population. And then we can save the reports and we can give the report a name and we'll save it. That's it. That's how you author a semantic model from the gold layer of Databricks publish it directly to Power BI service. Without desktop, you can create role level security in Power BI. You can utilize the role level security in Unity Catalog. You can create a report directly on top. You can use import or direct query. Um, a few roadmap items to notice. One is right now you can either publish all of the tables in a single schema or choose one single table. The ability to select tables is on the roadmap. Also, the ability to do this through API calls is also on the roadmap. So in the future, you will be able to do this publish to Power BI service as part of your CI CD pipeline that is end to end DevOps from Databricks to Power BI. That's it. I hope you enjoy the video and enjoy this new feature as well. See you at the next video.